Hey everybody, this is Dungeon Chill, and today we're talking about Lunacid, a first-person action RPG developed by Kira LLC, an independent studio consisting of Akuma Kira, who, according to the studio's website, tries to recreate the feel of old-school horror classics, frequently using purposely dated graphics and mechanics. Their previous work includes, most notably, Lost in Vivo, a PS1-style horror game released in 2018, and the Dollhouse DLC for Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion, released in 2020. Lunacid was first released on Steam on March 16th, 2022 through the Early Access program, and at the time of this writing is on version 0.9.7.1, so getting close to a full release. Since the game isn't fully available yet, consider this video a preview of sorts, just a taste of what's available. Lunacid, according to its Steam page, is a first-person dungeon crawler inspired by old FromSoft games like Shadow Tower and Kingsfield. And yeah, I'd say it really nails those styles of games. Despite what image you choose on the character creation screen, you play as a disembodied hand that's been left for dead after being dumped into a giant well, exploring a dank, decrepit world with the goal of making it back to the surface. I, I don't know if this is really what's happening, but your hand is the only part of the character that you can see in the game, and your hand is chopped off in the opening cutscene. I don't know, I just like the idea that you're just playing as a hand and not the body that was attached to it. While Lunacid is clearly inspired by Shadow Tower and Kingsfield, unlike those games, where, thanks to the limitations of the consoles of the time, feels like you're moving and turning through molasses, Lunacid has pretty normal movement speed, and it can even be upgraded through your speed stat. You also have a jump button, and the height of your jump can be upgraded as well. In fact, the stat upgrades have more in common with the Souls series. While you gain traditional experience by killing enemies and reach certain thresholds to level up, you gain skill points with each of those level ups, which can then be freely distributed to each of your six stats. So you have a bit more control over how to build your character. You also choose from several starting classes in the beginning of the game, but these really just decide your starting stats and don't affect gameplay all that much. You have access to a variety of weapons, such as swords, spears, bows, staves, and others. Some of these weapons have an XP bar, which will raise as you attack with them, and after it becomes full, they can be upgraded at a fountain in the rest area. There is no stamina system, unlike the FromSoft games that inspired it, but you do have a meter in the top right that can be filled up by holding the attack button and this will charge you up for a more powerful blow. You also have magic in the form of special rings that can be equipped, much like another FromSoft game, Eternal Ring. Magic comes in the usual variety of elemental flavors like fire, ice, and wind, but there are also some more interesting spells revolving around blood magic, which can do things like unlock hidden passages, or even raise the dead. There's also a coffin spell that can create coffins, and you could find some pretty creative uses for that one. There are plenty of other spells to find. Magic is pretty robust and useful in Lunacid, and with the way you can customize your character, you can fit it into any playstyle. There are quite a variety of areas to explore, from the cavernous passageways in the beginning of the game to a dark underground temple, to a sewer, cistern-type place called the Fetid Mire, and even an underground forest. Plus a few others, like a catacomb with possessed paintings and a lake full of blood. Each of the areas are distinct and come with their own themed enemies that serve a larger environmental storytelling purpose. Large snails in cavern areas, mummies and corpses in the underground temple, slimes in the sewers, and some more unique looking enemies in other areas. There are a few surprising boss designs as well that I won't spoil here. While a lot of the environments in the game can be rather dark and oppressive in their mood and design, the game actually has a lot of levity. NPCs are rather unique and colorful in their dialogue. Not everyone is a crestfallen knight or a doomed maiden. There are certainly some interesting characters that you'll meet on your travels. There's also a weird incongruity to the game world that lends it an air of mystery. The game is clearly set in some kind of fantastical setting, with moonlight and demonic creatures being strong lore points, and the opening cutscene shows a sort of Victorian-style neighborhood, maybe a bit similar to Yarnum and Bloodborne. But the title screen features VHS tapes littered on the ground. You can even find a VHS tape and a TV-VCR combo later in the game. Clearly there's something else going on here beyond the simple gothic fantasy setting. The last thing to mention is the music. Unlike Shadow Tower, which pretty much has no music throughout the game, music is prominently featured in Lunacid. So much so that whenever you reach a new area where the music changes, you'll get the title of the track and the artist popping up in the bottom corner of the screen. Akuma Kira, the main designer of the game, is responsible for a lot of the music. But there are also contributions from frequent Kira LLC musical collaborators Jaron Christ and Nolan Reese. There are even tracks from the YouTube creator slash Sophistifuture Skunk King Thor High Heels. The music ranges from ambient tracks to lo-fi beats, and honestly, its style is one of the inspirations for the name of this channel. You're just dungeon crawling, spelunking to some dank beats, and chilling out. 
though the combat can sometimes get intense and the enemies can be a bit intimidating, mostly everything combined in this game equates to a pretty chill time. It's a great world to hang out in, to marvel at, to study the small details of. Anyway, I guess that's about all I want to say without diving even deeper into it. Hopefully there'll be a full release sometime later this year. For now, you should definitely check out Lunacid. Though it says it's inspired by older FromSoft games, I think people who are into the Souls series or just dungeon crawlers in general may also find a lot to like about this game. What's here is pretty substantial, too. If you're taking your time to explore and find secrets, a playthrough of the current content will probably last you a good 12 to 15 hours, I'd say. It's also only $6.99 USD in early access, and it's well worth that amount. So yeah, Lunacid. Check it out. Dungeon Chill. Out.